today we're taking a look at what could be a new favorite in the handheld community, the Retroid Pocket Flip. The Flip comes in the standard Retroid box, so let's pop it out and take a closer look at the handheld. In the box, we obviously have the console and a Type-C USB cable. Underneath the packaging, we don't have anything else in the box. The console has definitely been packaged well. Let's take a closer look at the handheld. This is the watermelon color which I ordered and I also did pay for it with my own money. It's great to see the watermelon make a comeback on the flip. As you can see, the renders definitely look way more transparent than the actual device is. In the case, we also have this card that shows some of the specs and the overview of the device. It looks really professional in the box here and I really think it reminds me a lot of something that you'd see from iNeo. Let's take a closer look at the device itself. The plastics on the device look excellent, and you can tell a lot of thought went into the design of the console. You can see the ribbon cable on the back of the screen, which is not too bad, but you can also see this little timestamp here from when the plastic shell was made. I kind of wish that they put that on the bottom. Overall though, the build quality is excellent, and I'm quite happy with the quality of the plastics. I haven't had a clamshell since the new 2DS XL, so it's kind of interesting to take a look at one. The transparent red with the black buttons looks awesome. On the left side of the device, we have our micro SD card slot, which has a little cover over top. On the bottom, you can see the power button and a 3.5mm headphone jack. There's also a small little dent in the plastic here. I'm not sure where that came from, as I'm really careful with my devices, but both my other flips don't have that. On the right side of the device, you can see we have our volume buttons. Moving on to the back, you can see that we have our standard buttons, as well as two programmable buttons here, which we can program in the software. We also have our HDMI out and a Type-C charging port. These are also analog triggers, which is first on a Retroid device. We also have active cooling, which gets sucked into this small little hole here and gets exhausted up at the top. We also have dual down firing speakers here at the bottom. We have a rubber membrane based D-pad here and a place to report it's excellent. This is definitely one of my favorite D-pads on a handheld. Rubber membrane D-pads are very quiet as opposed to their dome counterparts. Of course, that's just personal preference. The face buttons are also double injection molded and they're rubber membrane based as well. The face buttons here are excellent and they remind me a lot of the Ioneo Air. They do however require a little extra force to push down in comparison. The hall sliders here are definitely the star of the show. They feel excellent and are very smooth. They do have clickable L3 and R3 but it does require a little extra force to push it down once you slid it over to the edge. I don't have any Nintendo devices on hand to compare these two, but I've heard they feel very similar to the new 2DS XL ones. I'm not the biggest fan of low profile joysticks, but I think these hall sensors are going to be a different experience altogether. We also have a small start and select button here at the bottom. The first thing I notice when playing this in a simple 2D game like this is how smooth these things actually are. They're extremely responsive as well. In fact, I would probably go as far as to say that I enjoy using these for 2D games way more than even a full analog stick. And the result, because these are so smooth and responsive, I actually find games like this a lot easier with these than a standard joystick. The Gully Kit Hall Sensor joysticks for the Switch are also really smooth, but these are definitely smoother. I haven't had any quality control issues on any of my Hall Sensor sliders. That's excellent to see. So on a 2D game, would I recommend trying out these sliders? Pfft, heck yeah, absolutely. So they work good in 2D games, how are they in 3D stuff? Well let's take a look. I generally use Sonic Adventure 2 as a good test for joysticks, as it requires precise timing and movement. As you can see, even with my jumps being slightly off, I am lining up okay with these ramps here, so I would say these are pretty good joysticks for 3D games. If I had to put these in order of usability, I would say that the low profile joysticks on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus are worse than this, but these are pretty good and I'd say they're right behind a full size joystick. Before I had the flip, I was actually thinking that these sliders weren't going to be very good for 3D games so I was only going to play 2D stuff. After testing it though, I'm pleased to report that I'm definitely going to be enjoying some Dreamcast on here. One of the other big things that a lot of people have been worried about is this hinge on this device. The hinge though, however, I'd say is extremely strong and I don't see it breaking anytime soon. It'll definitely outlast the device. There's also a spot here in the middle where you can open it up. There's two little stoppers on the back of the hinge that stop it from opening the entire way, but I think it opens enough for me. The lid also closes equally onto the device once fully closed. Looking at the back, you can see those two little stoppers behind the screen hinge. 
There are no individual locking points on the screen as you're pushing it back, so it'll just keep going until you hit those stoppers. I wouldn't recommend cutting off these little stoppers as they're there for a reason and it still opens wide enough to enjoy the device. Even when moving the device around, I found the screen doesn't move at all unless you're pushing it with your finger directly. I tested the hinge on the watermelon, the Sport Red, and the 16-bit, and all three models are equally as strong. If I was really picky about it, I'd say that the hinge on the solid colors does feel ever so slightly better, but it's within margin of error at this point, and as you can see, the transparent model still has an extremely strong hinge. Obviously, all the flip models share the same hinge either way. If you're worried about the hinge, don't be, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Either way, excellent job on the hinge retroid. Another big benefit of the clamshell device is being able to close the screen in entirely, so you don't need a screen protector, which is really nice. Let's do a clean boot test to see how long it takes to power up the device. With a little over 28 seconds to boot, that's not too bad. Taking a look at those analog triggers, you can see that they work really well, and I think people that want these for racing games or something similar are going to be pretty happy. I also didn't expect to like Android games on this device as much as I do, and even with something like Titan Quest, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think a lot of people are going to be quite happy with this device. Now let's get into the overall summary of what I think about the device, and who would I recommend it to. Overall, I think the flip is excellent, I think the biggest pro is definitely the build quality and the design itself, but it still has that beautiful screen found on the 3 Plus. The only thing I really didn't like about the device so far is the performance fan mode. I'm pretty sure Retroid is already aware of this issue, and hopefully they'll manage to fix it soon with an update. In the meantime, both balanced and smart fan modes are whisper quiet, so this is not a big issue. Here's what that sounds like. Overall, they really went above and beyond in designing this console. The face buttons are really nice and high quality, the sliders are accurate and hall based as well as some of the smoothest I've ever seen. The build quality and the colors look excellent and I honestly think this is probably one of the best handhelds you can buy for under $200. If you like clamshell devices or you're curious about the form factor, give it a try.